Next up, I'm looking at the Bitcoin Oracle, Vinny Lingham. Vinny, the last time we spoke, you said something, and at the time I thought you were being overly bearish. You warned us that this bear market was going to go on and on and on. I remember I asked you what happens next, and you said it goes down and down for a long period of time with a whole lot of spikes along the way. Well, Vinny, has it been a long period of time? Is this the end of the bear market? So, Ryan, I think um, on balance, it may be the start of the bottoming out phase, right, of the bear market. The problem with this is it doesn't mean that the bottom is the way we see today in terms of price. Uh, it could be 50% down. It could be 20% down. It could be the bottom, right? 6,000 could be the bottom. I think it's probably a 50-50 chance that it's not the bottom uh, and that we go down further and we have to test the new lows just because of the pure fundamentals around how crypto works and how uh, Bitcoin and ETH are really the, the fiat gateways uh, for a, a massive crypto economy. And so uh, this is a, a huge thesis which which I've had and I'll fund you know, multi-coin capital. We've played this out as well. We, we really don't think that the bottom is there yet. but if the market turns around, is there some catalyst for growth? Maybe. Vinny, could the market be going down because ICOs raised money in Bitcoin and ETH and they're now panic selling into the market? So essentially what I'm saying is, if you look at how much money was raised uh, through ETH and through Bitcoin, the headline numbers uh, when ETH was at $1,400 isn't correct, right? So if you said uh, at $1,400, oh, we've just raised a billion dollars this month, well, at 250 or 300, uh, that's been chopped significantly. So the runways of these companies, because even though the, the, the you know from a journalistic perspective it makes great headlines to throw out big numbers, uh, it, it wasn't they didn't raise US dollars. And so for you know in crypto, for every dollar that someone's putting into crypto, there's a seller on the other side. And so for every dollar that's needed by someone who's running a crypto company in order to pay salaries, to pay travel, to pay operation expenses, there needs to be a counterparty, a, a dollar buyer on the other end. And what happens is, if you do the mathematics behind this, it appears to be that there is somewhere in the region of, of a billion dollars a month worth of crypto sales into fiat that, that needs fiat to get out of the system. So in other words, crypto companies, the crypto economy needs a billion dollars a month just to keep going and to pay salaries, infrastructure, et cetera, to support the lives and operations of 50 to 100,000 people across 45,000 companies. Um, and this is a real big concern. And, and, and to give you an example, in the previous bear market, the biggest source of price coming down really and, and, and pricing pressure was, first of all, crypto sales, second of all, miners. Right now, miners need to sell just in Bitcoin alone somewhere in the region of $200 million worth of Bitcoin a month just to basically cover their costs. So you take the mining costs and then you add the salaries and operations. Salaries and operations are four times what mining costs are in this current bear run. So that means that just to stay where we are and to prevent a net outflow, we need to bring in $1.2 billion worth of new capital every single month. That sounds crazy. That's absolutely correct. And this is why I'm bearish on the market currently, because I, unless institutional and retail demand can bring in over a billion dollars a month worth of uh, fiat into the crypto ecosystem, what happens is uh, companies and, and, and projects have to sell more crypto in order to get the same amount of fiat out of the system. So now you have massive supply coming into the market. And so what happens with, with, with the crypto tokens is the, pr the reason the prices are going down is because the gateway isn't the tokens. The tokens don't have enough fiat um, pairs, so they have to go and swap tokens into US, into, sorry, into BTC or ETH and then into USD to get money out of the system. Vinny, the Bitcoin maximalists have been saying that if you bought an altcoin, you effectively bought a shitcoin. And at the end of the whole revolution, there'll only be one chain that survives, and that's going to be the Bitcoin chain. Now, wearing your Civic shirt, do you see a world where only one chain survives and that will be the Bitcoin chain? So I would say that, um, you know, rumors of the death of the utility token have been greatly exaggerated at this point. Uh, I think 95% of them are probably going to die. So that's fair. 
So 95% of these tokens out there are, are, are total crap. They're scams. Uh, the teams behind them don't know what they're doing. They're going to run out of money. Uh, and the bear markets are great. This crypto bear market is fantastic. It's going to wash out all the pretenders from the real uh, builders. I mean, builders are going to build. And so when we're building our product and our technology, we you know we have a runway that's actually based in USD. We don't hold crypto, not much. And so we've been smart about it. A lot of other teams have been holding you know ETH all the way down from 1400 to 250 or 300. And so they're under price pressure and these projects are going to run out of money. We famously sold all our crypto very early on uh, as we did the, the token sale because we felt we had a plan, a roadmap that was based in USD and a predictable um, unit of account, essentially. And I think uh, gambling on crypto is, is something which, you know, individual speculators and investors can do. But if you're an operator and you're running a company, you need to make sure you have the runway to deliver what you what you promise uh, your community that you would.